This conference will now be recorded. In the previous session, we have discussed about classes and we have discussed what exactly a class and what it represents and what a class contains internally and how can we define a class in Apex programming and what is the syntax we used to follow in order to define an Apex class we have discussed. And the various ways to define an Apex class also we have discussed practically in the previous session. And we have used two ways to define an Apex class. First one, by using standard navigation. Second one, by using developer console. Okay, now we have discussed both the mechanisms also in order to define an Apex class and how to define the members inside the class we have discussed okay, practically in the previous session. Now, now today we'll see the concept of objects. And we'll see what exactly an object, what it represents, and how can we create the object of a class through the object how can we enter into the class and how to access those members and how to assign the value for each and every member how to retrieve the values okay we'll see practically today and then we'll move forward to one more feature called as orm okay now so now tell me what do you mean by an object instance of a class okay right so because we have defined a class with the required members the class can have one or more variables procedures functions properties constructors all these things we can mix together to implement our own business logics so upon implementing the business logic, we require this okay, functionality. So we require these members. We require these procedures, functions, and everything. So once the class has been defined with the required members, how to access each and every member of a class? How to access each and every member of a class? In order to access that class members, we require a reference. We require a key. The key is called as object. So object is nothing but an instance of a class or it's a reference name or it's a key through which we can enter into the class. We can access each and every class member. That member may be either a variable also, procedure also, function also, anything whatever we have, we can access those members with the help of objects. Now. So when coming to the class, how many objects that we can create? Only one or multiple? Multiple. We can create multiple objects also for a class. So now each object will be holding okay, a separate value for the members. Each object will hold its own memory location, its own amount of memory locations also because object to object memory locations are completely different because the objects are purely supporting dynamic memory allocation. Now, then how can we create the object of a class? What is the syntax we used to follow upon defining, upon creating an object of the class? Now, let's see practically here. Okay, now, make a note of this one, objects. Once a class has been defined, with the required members 
once a class has been defined with the required members then we can access the members of the class with the help of an object with the help of an object object is nothing but an instance of the class or a reference or a key through which through which we can access the class members we can access the class members by using object we can access each class member and we can assign the value and we can retrieve the values retrieve the values from the class members by using object we can assign the values for the class members and then we can retrieve the values from the class members also but whenever we are preparing a class object a class can have one or more objects also a class can have one or more objects each object can hold a different set of values for the class members each object can hold a different set of values for the class members each object contains its own memory its own memory now objects supports dynamic memory allocation and and we can utilize the memory very efficiently hence we can utilize the memory very efficiently so there is no memory wastage as part of these objects as part of objects no memory wastage
done with this points now so then what is the syntax of creating an object now let me explain and then how it will work internally what are the parts that we have in this object creation now let me explain one by one for example i have a class products helper okay i have a class products helper let's see for this class how can we create the objects now let's see so this is my class that we have so it contains some set of members inside it so these are the members are available as part of my class now so it is a locked cupboard here okay so it is a locked cupboard which contains some group of valuable items inside that like as variables procedures functions and everything now once the class has been defined with the required members so these are the various members that I have defined once the class has been defined by using this okay various members then how can we access these members because we haven't assigned any values for these members here. so now how to assign the values for these members how to access the value from these members now let's see whenever if you want to manage the elements inside this class then we require an object without the object we can't deal with that elements inside my class then how can we do that now let's see whenever if you want to create the object of the class we have to follow a specific syntax let me give you the syntax first whenever if you want to create the object of the class we have to follow a specific syntax like we can specify the class name for which class you would like to create the object here. we can specify the object name with what name you want to create the object equals to we can use the keyword new keyword and then we can specify the class name and then we can close this braces here okay open and close the braces so this is the syntax we used to follow class name space object name equals to new and then class name then what is the meaning of this one i will explain one by one each and every part so now this part is indicating the name of the class for which you would like to create the object here so now it is indicating that name of the class for which class you are creating the object it is indicating name of the class for which you are creating the object second one it is indicating the object name that means reference name through which reference name we can access this object okay members we can re specify reference name okay that means that is also called as name of the object that is called as a name of the object here now this is a new keyword a new keyword is what this is for what generally allocating memory right memory allocation memory allocation will be taking care by new keyword so memory allocation memory allocation so we can allocate the memory with the help of this new keyword next the last part this part is called as what so this part is called as default constructor this part is called as default constructor this is called as default constructor these are the four parts we have the name of the class and the object name equals to new and then we can specify the class name.
Done? Now, let's see. So now when you observe this part, up to this part, this is looking like as a normal variable declaration, right? Like for example, we are having some integer, the product code. Okay, now we are having data type and then variable. This is also like as a data type variable. Okay, now here also, whatever the variable that we are defining in our normal programming, similar fashion we are having this half of the part over here. So now here it is indicating this. Okay, variable data type here and then variable name over here. Now, generally if I am defining the variable integer product code, how much memory will be reserved? Four bytes. Why? Hmm. For every integer variable, Apex programming has a defined a fixed size that is four bytes. So each integer variable will be having blindly four bytes of memory. The value may be small, value may be big, also it will occupy four bytes of memory. Now, in this case, if it is an integer variable, we are having some four bytes of memory. But now, for this variable, how much memory do we need to refer now? How much memory do we need to assign for this variable here? So in this case, this variable is nothing but my object here. Okay, this variable is nothing but my object. Now this will be of type what? This is a class, like as product, product helper. In this case, what needs to be done? This is a class type over here, because this is a class type. So in this case here, what we can do at that time, whatever the members that we have, okay, whatever the members that we have, it has to identify how many members are available, what type of members are available inside that it has to define based on those members it has to calculate how much memory will be required it will check how much memory will be required for this particular member here based on that it will be reserving the memory to do the calculation it is using the help of new keyboard because if it is an integer it's a fixed size four bytes but this is my own type over here my own variable this variable will be of type the product helper class type now, in this case, in product helper, how many variables are available? So many variables are available, different types of variables are available. So it will go to the respective class, it will verify how many members are available, what type of members are available based on that it will identify how much memory will be required, that much of memory will be getting reserved with the help of this new keyword. Okay so that to calculate the memory okay to calculate how much memory will be required it is using the help of this new keyword over here so the new keyword is used to verify how much memory will be required that much of memory will be getting reserved over here clear now in this case what this new keyword will do it is going to be reserving some memory over here once the memory has been getting reserved then what values it will store by default inside that for every variable, what value will be getting assigned by default? Null. Who will assign that value here? Who will assign that null value? For that one, it is using the help of this default constructor. So the default constructor is going to be assigning the default value for that number. For every member, it will allocate default value over here. So as part of Apex programming, we know if you are not assigning any value, the default value will be null. For every member, it will allocate the default value by null by this okay default constructor part. These are the four parts will be available as part of this object creation. The name of the class and the object name and the new keyword for the memory allocation and then the default constructor which will be allocating the required amount of memory over here. Clear? Understood the concept now? No. So this is the syntax we used to follow over here. Now, then how can we create the object? Okay, now we'll see. Okay, now. Let's see how can we create the object of this class here. Okay, just give me a minute, I will be back. Just I'm getting an important call. Give me a minute, I will be back.
let's see so then how can we create the object of this class now let me show you with the practical use case so let me create this i'm using this syntax and with the help of this syntax i'm creating the object of the class let's see so what is my class name here products helper now so now use that for example i am creating the object of the class products helper some p helper equals to new products helper now so i have specified this class name and then specify the object name equals to new keyword that means this new keyword is going to be allocating the memory for this variable so now but this variable is not a normal variable this is a variable of type the class product helper so immediately it will go to the product helper class it will verify inside this class how many members has been defined what type of members has been defined it will verify everything based on that it will calculate how much memory will be required and that much of memory will be getting reserved so the new keyword is going to be reserving the memory for this particular variable for example here so now this new keyword is going to be reserving the memory like as some 50 okay kb of memory has been reserved assume that it is reserving 50 kb of memory here is a 50 kb of memory has been reserved this is a memory memory reserved for object for this object it has reserved some 50 kb of memory here now this memory will be pointing to this variable the memory will be pointing to this variable in this memory what it will do it will store the value for this particular members like as this is the product code quantity product name manufacturer contact number email id so like that it is defining the member six id now product code quantity product name manufacturer and then contact number email address unit price and then is in stock like that it is having the members available here so these are the members will be available once the members are available then what this okay last part default constructor will do is default constructor is assigning the default value for this every variable generally for every variable what is the default value allocating the sales force null so now that null value will be assigning by this a default constructor for every variable it will allocate the default value as null for this quantity null name null manufacturer null contact number null email id null unit price null is in stock null so for every member it is allocating the default value as null this is the functionality whenever i am writing this line of code this much of functionality will be happening behind the screen clear understood the concept now next so now we have created the object here through this object what we can do we can enter into the class we can assign the value for the members and we can retrieve the values also now what i want to do is i want to assign the value for this number here so now this is the object here this is the member i want to assign some value instead of null i want to assign some value like as some 4500 then what needs to be done how to access this member this member will be accessible with the help of object through object we can access this member and we can assign the value for this member how to access this member by using object name object name dot member name what is the name of this object here p helper dot 
product to code equals to we can assign the value here this is how through the object we can access the class member we can assign the value for this now let's see is running the values is running the values for this class members how can we assign the values we can now let's see practically the syntax is i'm giving the syntax over here object name dot member name i will give the syntax also for everything i will give the notes point for this one equals to we can assign the value then how can we assign the value for this members now now tell me how to assign the values now now for this object how to assign the values p helper dot p helper dot product code product code i am assigning the value here 4500219 p helper dot product name product name is a string type so i am indicating some desktop device p helper dot quantity quantity is some 350 We have three hundred and fifty products are available here outside this stock. P helper dot manufacturer. I'm indicating as some Dell Incorporation. P helper dot contact number. I'm assigning the value plus one eight double zero seven eight seven double two double three. p helper dot email address like as sales at the rate some dell dot com p helper dot unit price i am assigning the value as some seventy nine thousand p helper dot is in stock equals to true the product is available in stock here so that we have assigned some values for this members whenever we are assigning this values automatically these values will be getting replacing in that locations by default here the values will be getting replaced inside that memory location here here is the product name product code and the product name this will be getting placed over quantity 350 it will be holding the value 350 manufacturer i am indicating as intel incorporation contact number i am indicating this the values will be getting assigned like that here whatever the values we have assigned these values will be placing inside that memory location automatically by default over here like that values will be getting assigned clear this is a functionality of this assigning the values for this means from there how can we get the values here now these variables are having some values right then how can we access this values hmm. same almost object name dot member name that's it simple so now retrieving the values how can we retrieve the values now let's see retrieving the values how to retrieve the values we can now let's see here now the syntax i'm indicating <coughs> object name dot member name that's it 
then how can we use this okay now let's see practically i want to show you that messages how to print this value System.debug product code is yes, how to access that by using object name. That means p helper dot product code. System.debug. Product name is P helper dot product name. I'm indicating unit price is P helper dot unit price. Like that, we can access each and every member from their arms. These are the steps. Okay. Once a class has been defined, these are the steps we used to follow. We can define the class first. Once the class has been defined with the required members, create the object of the class here. Once the object has been prepared, memory will be getting reserved. From there, we can assign the values for these class members. And we can retrieve the values from the class members by using object name that member. Like as your array is concept. There we are using indexes. Here we are using object name. That's it. Simple. Nothing else. Okay. Understood the concept now? How can we deal with these classes and the members inside it? Now, let's see. Make a note of this one. Sir, is it possible to access the data within a one line like using a system.debug p helper? It is possible yes. to object one single line. Yes, you can do okay. everything. If you want to show this whole data in a single line, simply we can use system.debug r. We can specify p helper. That's it. That it will display everything. Okay, the variable name, member name, value, comma, member name, value, everything it will represent within a single line itself over here. Okay. Now, make a note of this one. Syntax. We can specify class name and the object name equals to new class name. Class name and the object name equals to new and the class name. Note. It will calculate the required amount of memory for the variable, that means for the object, by using new keyword. New keywords and it will assign the default value as null for each member with the help of default constructor. Default constructor. That is class name and then disclosing part. But sir, if I want to show the data like uh, including a variable, is it possible? Yes, we can show. Depends upon Along the just you are placing that. Variable name, value, variable name, value, everything you can show. I will show that. Okay. Now, for example, I'm having this class called as products helper. 
some p helper equals to new product helper can we create multiple objects here for the same class yes we can create multiple objects also we can create multiple objects yeah. for the same class but object names should be always unique we can't create two objects with the same name okay the object names will be unique always for example i'm indicating products helper p helper equals to new product helper and product helper p helper 2 equals to new product helper now like that here we can create multiple objects also is running the values how to design okay now let's see once the object has been prepared for the class then we can assign the values for the class members by using object of the class as below syntax we can specify object name dot member equals to value for example p helper dot product code p helper dot product name p helper dot manufacturer p helper dot unit price p helper dot is in stock like that retrieving the values
Uh, sir, while assigning the values, if a string is not being mentioned in a single quote, what happens? Sir? So the compilation error. Okay, sir. Class name should be defined with the Pascal case, right, sir? Class name should be defined with Pascal case. So if we not define the first letter without a capital letter, what it will show an it error? Will accept, it will accept. It will accept as it is. But as a best of practice, we used to follow that because these are the standards, coding standards we used to follow. Because in Apex programming, you can define the class name with any name, uppercase, lowercase, no problem, it will accept. Programming language will accept, but upon following some standards while building the application, we used to follow this kind of naming conventions. Done? Now, retrieving the values. Once a values has been assigned to the variables, that means to the members, we can access them through with the help of objects as below. Well. Syntax, we can specify the object name dot member for example system dot d work product code is p helper dot product code system dot d work Product name is P helper dot product name system dot debug unit price is P helper dot unit price like that. So this is the way we can define the class, we can define the members, we can create the objects, we can assign the values, we can retrieve the values.
done with the steps now let's see how can we do this one with the help of this practical use case now let me explain so let's take that complete step by step approach how can we implement with the practical simple concept as a step one define the class with the required members and then as a step two create the object of the class as a step three assign the values for each and every member of the class as a step four we can access the members of the class okay now so now here you can raise a question sir whenever we are assigning the value for the class members is it mandatory to assign the value for every member of the class no it's optional it's your choice if you want to assign the value for every member we can assign if you want to assign for only one member we can assign for the remaining members it will store the value as null by default here whatever the values we have assigned for the members those values will be holding inside that for the remaining members the value will be null by default here okay now let's see so let's take a small use case if you know this example perfectly okay the next concept orm is simple okay because topics are interlinked topics over here if you know this today's example perfectly then tomorrow's topic will be very very easy for you that is orm through orm how to interact with your salesforce object through programmatically how to insert the records how to insert single record how to insert bulk records how to insert related records like as account related contact related opportunity related case related task everything i want to insert in one shot including data loader also can't do this data loader will allow us to insert the records in team only one object but i want to insert the records in multiple objects at a time here okay then how to do that okay we'll see through orm concept here without using any database programming through the same apex programming i would like to insert everything okay now we'll see as part of orm now let's take a small use case now write an apex program to define an apex class to manage the patient details to manage the patient details and assign the values for the members and the print the values on the debug log file and print the values on the debug log file now let's see how can we define the class and how to create the objects how to assign the values how to retrieve the value the complete okay the complete step by step approach we'll see one by one next let me go to my salesforce org now i'm going to my salesforce org now let's go to the developer console i'm creating the class because preparing the class can be from standard navigation or developer console so go to the developer console click on file 
new Apex class. I'm giving the class name as patient's helper, okay? Patient's helper or patient details, anything, whatever you want. We can give any name for the class. Now the class will be getting prepared here. Inside the class, we can define the required members. Now tell me generally related to a patient, what kind of data that we can collect? Patient code for every patient that allocating the patient code. Age. Name of the patient, age. age of the patient, gender, and then location from which city the patient is coming to this hospital, and then contact number, email ID, issue, consultation fee, and the disease the description, and the doctor name to whom they would like to consult, and the visiting date, okay, and what date he is visiting over here. And then they are going to be collecting whether the patient is already consulted the doctor or not. These are few members. Okay, these are few details which we like to collect. Now, let's see. I'm defining the members. Public integer patient code patient age. Public string patient name. Doctor name, location, contact number, email address. This is the description. Okay, this is the description. Next, public decimal consultation fee. Public date, visiting date, public boolean is completed. That means is visited or is in progress. That we can specify. Now, these are the members which I would like to define as part of my class. So now as part of this patient, we are going to be collecting the patient code, patient age, patient name, and the doctor name, and then location, contact number, email ID, this is the description, consultation fee, and the visiting date, and is in progress whether he has already consulted the doctor or the other okay still he is not yet consulted we can check it out so these are the members of the class once the class has been defined with the required members save that class code first because without saving the class code we can't create the object we can't access the members so save the class code perfectly how do we know whether the class code has been saved or not how can we check it out star symbol inside your file name okay after this okay patient helper dot apxc after that if it is having star mark that means what the class is not yet saved if you are not having any star symbol then it means class has been saved successfully inside your metadata repository now done so this is what preparing the class with the required members now how can we access that class members here for that one we require object then where we can create this object now let's see object creation means what executing the class invoking the class so invocation of the code will be always done from execute anonymous window okay from execute anonymous window only we can execute your apex class code whatever the business logics that you have prepared if you want to execute the business logics we have to use execute anonymous window this developer console is only to write the code not to execute we can't execute any code from developer console just we can prepare the code that's it but we can't execute in order to execute that piece of code we are using the help of execute anonymous window then how to go to the execute anonymous window now what is the shortcut control e just you can use this control e we can go to the execute anonymous window now so now create the object of the class
create the object of the class. So what is my class name? Patient's helper. Now tell me the object creation. What is the syntax? Patient's helper. Object name I'm indicating as some p helper equals to new patient helper. Hmm. Open and close braces. That means this is the default constructor. So this is the object creation. Patient's helper. That means class name. We can specify the object name equals to new and then create this specify the class name. This part is called as a default constructor part, which will be allocating the default values for the class member as null. Now, so now once the class has been getting defined and once the object has been created, what is the default value will be storing the Salesforce? Null. Then how do we know? What is the guarantee that it is storing null? I want to print. Print the values. I'm printing that system dot debug patient details are I'm indicating simply p helper. That means the complete okay all the details of the patient I would like to print. Simply I'm giving the object name. Once you click on execute, see the results. Select the debug only. Now it is indicating patient details are consultation fee value will be null see consultation fee will be null contact number null this is the description null doctor name null email id null is in progress null for every member it is assigning the value as null this is a problem because here default constructor will assign the default value as null for every member but now i don't want to hold the null values i want to assign my own values by my own then how can we assign my own values now? Let's see. Assigning the values. P helper dot patient code. I'm indicating okay six nine double zero two three nine. P helper dot patient name. I'm indicating the patient name as so now some Sai Kumar. P helper dot patient age. Like some 32. P helper dot location. I'm giving as some Hyderabad. P helper dot contact number. Plus nine one. I'm indicating P helper dot email address. I'm indicating that like as some Sai Kumar at the rate some Gmail dot. P helper dot consultation fee. I'm indicating as some 700. P helper dot doctor name. I'm indicating some doctor Rakesh Sahai. P helper dot I'm indicating as this is the description. I'm indicating okay regarding heavy fever. Now high temperature. Simply I would like to specify high temperature. A temperature and cold and cough. Now, P helper dot visiting date. Now, today he is visiting. How can we collect the today's date? For that one, we are using system dot today. 
system is a ready-made class inside that we have a ready-made method called as today method which will collect the today's sales for server day not my local system date here for my local system i can set any date hold a date also future date also everything we can set but not the today's my local system date it will collect that sales for server date now p helper dot is in progress is in progress i'm assigning the value this is how we can assign the value for your members retrieve the values Sir, true is not a string. Sorry? True is not a string, sir. No. Is in progress. Last. No, is in progress. Is in progress is a Boolean type. See, let's see. It's a Boolean. Okay. Sir. Okay. That's what I'm assigning. True. So whenever we are storing this, okay, numerical values, Boolean values. And the date values don't enclose in single quote. Specify directly. Hmm. If you want to assign a future date over here, okay, future date. That means assume that today is a date here. For example, today I made a call over here to book the appointment because the doctor is not available every time here. We need to have that pre-booking slot. So at that time here, they are giving the date here after ten. Days. So we can specify that at days of ten. So after 10 days, I would like to okay, consult the doctor over here. Because today I'm done with the consultation. Doctor asked me to come by after 10 o'clock, 10 days again here. But he asked me to complete that medicines for the next 10 days. After 10 days, I would like to visit. But the doctor will not be available always. He will be always busy. He's a famous doctor here. So now so that I would like to book that appointment a bit prior itself. So that I want to specify the visiting date will be like as after 10 days whatever the date that we have today's date we can collect add 10 more days okay from now onwards that date will be getting prepared it will place inside that variable now sir this is how spelling. to retrieve the values now Now, now I'm indicating that system dot debug patient code is I'm printing this value p helper dot patient code system dot debug patient name is p helper dot patient name system dot debug i'm indicating consultation p is p helper dot 
consultation fee. Doctor name is P helper dot doctor name. Visiting date is P helper dot visiting date. Contact number is I want to print P helper dot contact number. Email address is email address. Like that, we can able to print each and every member on the debug log file by using this object name dot member name. Done with this. Yeah, so can you scroll up completely? Sir, is it possible to create uh, object and uh, SNA values in developer console? No. For that one, we require okay. that procedures and functions. So we have to create another class. OK. Thank you. Now, let's see how can we execute this piece of code now. So we have prepared a class with the name patient helper by defining the required members inside it. And then in order to assign the values, we have prepared the object of the class. And we are able to represent all the values at a time by using this object name directly. And then we can assign the new values for each and every member. Whatever the values that you want, we can assign the values for each and every member. And then we can retrieve the values also here. Okay, we can retrieve the values for each and every member. Clear? Now. So now click on execute button. Now is in progress. Developer console progress uh, mistake. Now let me check. Okay. Here R is missing. So 
so let me execute this piece of code let's go back to the developer console and then select the debug only checkbox now now we can able to see that patient code value patient name and the consultation fee doctor name visiting date also that means 24th of this month and the contact number and the email id so whatever the values we have assigned we can able to represent those values also on your debug log file clear we can create the object class with the required members as a step two create the object of the class as a step three assign the values as a step four retrieve the values okay these are the four steps now tell me suppose if this class is giving by salesforce then how many steps will be there then three steps what are those three steps creating the object of the class assigning the values retrieving the values so this is, as part of orm this is what we are going to do this class also will be building by salesforce how tomorrow i will show you that in orm concept who will build this class what it contains what methods are available inside that class what variables are available inside the class and then how to access those members how to assign how to retrieve how to insert into the database table we'll see practically here clear understood the concept now now let me place this code this is a class code from developer console execution this will be from execute anonymous window now make a note of some use cases as and minus first one write an apex program to define an apex class to many is the project details to many is the project details and assign the values for the members and print the values on the debug log file this is the first one second one write an apex program to define an apex class to manage the project details sorry to manage the student details and assign the values for the members and print the values on the debug log file these are the two assignments over here Okay. So can you these are the two assignments we used to follow here. 
sir can you explain about uh, first assignment uh, what exactly details we need to assign to the project member now I regarding mean, the project what kind of data that we can store now for example assume that we got a new project from a client what kind of details that we can store project code title of the project here what is the name of the project client name okay the name of the client for whom we are building the project team size how many members are there in this project here budget cost what is the cost of this project here and then start date of the project end date of the project over here contact number of that client email id of the client location of the client is the client is us client uk client or what okay and then whether the project is in progress or not so these are the members here related to the project regarding the student you know okay because you are aware of very well okay about this student details so now define the required okay members over here and then we can able to assign the values between the values for this okay complete this two assignments by tomorrow okay but tomorrow morning okay before coming to the session complete these two assignments so that tomorrow's topic will be very very easy for you to understand okay tomorrow we are going to discuss about a concept called as orm object relationship and the mapping what is this orm what we can do with the help of this orm how to interact with your salesforce objects through programmatically by using this orm without using database programming without using database programming sql pl sql without using any database programming how to connect to the database how to manage the records everything will see one by one okay don't miss this part here tomorrow's topic will be very very important okay thank you so can you